Hi, and welcome to this video where we're going to be using QuickTouch Pro to create just a really basic poker clock to kind of introduce you to QuickTouch Pro and show you uh, how you build a poker clock. Uh, so to start us off, we've got uh, the QuickTouch Pro Editor and QuickTouch Pro. And the way this works is you create templates in the QuickTouch Pro Editor and you view them in QuickTouch Pro. So we'll go ahead and open up the editor to get started. And the first thing we're prompted to do is create a new template. And for the size, uh, the width and the height, uh, QuickTouch Pro has automatically chosen a size for us based off our current screen resolution. And each, uh, and there's actually a blog post about this if you uh, want to learn more about this, but each column is 100 pixels wide and each row is 100 pixels tall. So this template's actually going to be 1200 by 900. And my screen resolution is actually 1280 by 960, I think. Uh, so you can see it's going to be really close to my actual screen resolution. Uh, and then we come down here to where it says full screen. Uh, and that tells QuickTouch Pro to go ahead and stretch this template to fit whatever resolution we display this template. On. So uh, in this case, it's going to stretch a little bit to 1280 and a little more to 960. Uh, so that's full screen for you. And now we have monitor, which tells us which monitor we want to display this template on. Um, Quick Touch Pro supports as many monitors as your hardware does, uh, but for this video, we'll do one or monitor one. And these three down here are for displaying multiple templates at the same time, so we're just going to say OK. And that creates us a brand new template here that is 12 columns across by 11 rows tall. And if we previewed this template right now uh, in QuickTouch Pro, we wouldn't see anything. We'd just see our desktop because we just have a blank transparent template sitting here. So let's add a little information to it. And again, we're going to be making a poker clock here. So let's start with, uh, let's put a header up here at the top with our header text. And this is going to be just the name of our tournament. So I'm going to stretch the text all the way across the top. And we'll call this, uh, we'll go for a sample poker tournament. Uh, so we got our title there, and one of the things we could do is make our font bold for sure, or of course here, uh, we can make our font color, let's pick, a, eh, let's make it some kind of light blue or something here maybe, it's our font color. Uh, so there's our tournament name, leave that where it is. Uh, we also want to, if we, again, now if we previewed our template right now, we'd see our tournament name, but we'd still see our desktop behind it because we don't have any background. Uh, so we're going to assign a background to this template, and we do that from the template tab, the background group. And we could choose either a solid color, or a gradient color, or an image, or we could clear it uh, if there was a background on there we didn't want. Uh, for now, let's do, let's just do a solid color. Uh, and we'll start with the blue we did for the text, but maybe make it uh, a little darker so our text stands out. Uh, so there's our background. So if we preview this now, we will see a sample tournament written, or sample poker tournament up across top. And again, we chose full screen, so Quick Touch Pro goes ahead and uh, stretches the template out to fit the entire screen. Uh, in fact, if we had show taskbar turned off here, uh, Quick Touch Pro would even extend farther down and cover up uh, this area here. So we're going to right click on Quick Touch Pro. Notice Quick Touch Pro doesn't show up in the taskbar down here. This is the editor. Uh, but Quick Touch Pro itself only shows up down here in the uh, system tray. So we're going to right click on it, choose exit, go back into the editor. Uh, so we've got our sample poker, sample poker tournament title. Uh, the next thing we want to do is put a label on here that shows us how much time is left in the current level. And that would be the clock you're used to seeing on a poker clock. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab a text control. And I'm just going to drop it on the canvas where we want this to go. And stretch it out. Uh, maybe move it down a little bit. Uh, get it nice and big because, again, this is the clock everyone's going to be looking at. Everyone, everyone will be looking at to know when the blinds are going up. Um, so instead of like typing in what the clock's going to be, we really want to bind this to our actual poker clock so it's a real-time display of how much time's left on our current level. And to do that, the first thing we have to do is set up our tournament structure in Quick Touch Pro. We have to create what's called a data source that tells Quick Touch Pro about our tournament, how many, what the blinds are, what the levels are, how long they are, that kind of thing. Uh, so let's do that. And we do that under the Data tab. And we come down to Data Sources, and we're going to create a new data source. And we're going to change the type here from ADO, which would be uh, like SQL, anything with a connection string, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to come down here to the very bottom to Poker Clock. And this is our new data source. It's going to be a Poker Clock. Uh, and again, this is just a really basic Poker Clock. Uh, there could be better implementation here if, you know, if there's interest. We could certainly add a lot more features to this. Uh, but for now, we've got the ante, small blind, big blind, how long the level is, and whether or not it's a break. Uh, so for our little sample tournament here, let's start the blinds at 5 and 10. And let's make 15-minute levels. And we'll hit Add. Uh, so level 1, no ante, five, uh, 5 for the small blind, 10 for the big blind, 15 for the levels. Uh, level 2 we'll do is 10, and uh, what would be good here, 20 maybe. Uh, and then we could do 15 and 30. And notice they're all 15 minute levels still, so 5, 10, 10, 20, 15, 30. Uh, let's do a break next. And for a break, we don't care about the ante, small blind, or big blind. Uh, we do care about the minutes, and let's do a five minute break. And we'll put a check mark here in the box that says level break. Choose add level. So now when we get to level four, you can see we're going to drop to a five minute break. 
so for level 5 we want to get back on track here so we'll be 20 uh, and 40 and you could obviously have an ante in here too we're not going to do that for this video uh, we're going to go back to 15 minutes for this level and we're, it's not going to be a break so we'll hit add level again so we've got level 1 through 5 and if we get past level 5 let's just double the blinds uh, so level 6 will be 40, 80 etc uh, etc et uh, this next section down here network uh, this would be for multiple poker clocks running on multiple machines across your network or the internet uh, so we're not going to worry about that for this video but we're going to choose create uh, and again we're creating a data source uh, that represents our tournament structure so we're going to save this out to a file on the hard drive uh, and we're going to call it, uh, it doesn't really matter what we call it here, so I'm going to call it Poker Tournament. Spell that right, hopefully, Tournament. Uh, choose Save. And we want to add this to the active template we can say now. Uh, so now that we've created our uh, data source, our tournament structure, we can come up here to the Data tab, to the Data Binding Group, and remember we have our uh, text selected here, and this is what it's going to be our level time remaining. Uh, and we're just going to come up to our data source. We don't have one on our template yet, but we'll browse out to one with this icon. Uh, browse for Data Source. And there's our poker tournament data source we just created, which again is just a list of our levels and blinds essentially. So we'll say open. And as soon as we do that, our data path drop down fills with all the options. This is everything we can display about this poker clock now. Uh, we can display the current level time, which is in this case level is 1, so our current level time is 15 minutes. Uh, current level is 1, so level t current level would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, current level description would be the word level and then the number 1, so level 1, level 2, level 3, break, level 5. Uh, anti, small blind, and big blind, of course, are the blinds. Level time remaining, that's what we're actually going to display in our label here. That is the current time left on the clock, so if it starts at 15 minutes and you're halfway through, you know, seven and a half minutes, whatever. Uh, total time elapsed, uh, that's the hours, minutes, and seconds since the tournament was started. Uh, time until the next break is, a, whoops, uh, sorry about that, is uh, how many minutes until the next break comes up, or actually hours, minutes, and seconds, so you can display it however you want. Uh, next level time is level two is 15 minutes, next level is level two. Level two description, of course, is level two. Uh, and then whatever the next anti small blind and big blind are. Uh, so again for this one we want level time remaining so we're just going to select it off the list and we still have our text selected down here you can tell by the little uh, uh, bounding box and we hit apply and our text changes to this square bracket and this is trying to say level time remaining uh, but you can't see it because the ellipse is indicating that the text is too big for that box we need to make the font smaller so if we came under home and we could start to lower this uh, to make that fit, but uh, it's not actually going to say level time remaining. That's actually just what it's bound to, uh, which you can see over here under its properties. Uh, you have data binding. It's down to the, or bound to, excuse me, the poker tournament data source and the level time remaining. So when we preview this, it's actually going to show however much time is left in the level, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 2 hours, whatever that is. Um, and level time is just kind of a placeholder for us, so we could change that to whatever we want. And I like to change it to, let's say, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds and I do that because I want to just put some text in that box that's going to represent what that's going to look like when the template's running uh, because you know I don't want my font to be too big so that uh, someone sees an ellipse because the hour got bigger than I expected it to be for example uh, so I want to just put something in this box that's going to help you align and size the text uh, so we're going to make it bold and we can see again now we can make it quite a bit bigger uh, now we've made it too big uh, so we drop it down one and now it fits in the box uh, so there's our level time remaining and if we preview this again you will see that instead of 23, 59, 59, it says 15 minutes because we're sitting at the start of level 1, which has 15 minutes remaining. Uh, so let's go back into the editor. So the next thing we need to do, uh, actually the next thing we do is probably save this. Let's go ahead and come up to our quick save icon here. And I'm just going to save this as, uh, let's call it Poker Tournament again. Uh, and this is just saving the template. Obviously, don't want to lose our work here. Uh, if something were to happen. So now we're going to create, uh, we need a way to start our poker clock and we're going to do that through by creating a start button and there's a lot of ways you could start the poker clock in Quick, Quick Touch Pro uh, and about anything can be a button but we're going to start off by just doing a border which is just a little square really and a text and we'll drop them down and I'm going to zoom in with the slider here and holding down the space bar I'm going to pan over to our soon to be button and again, we have two controls here. We have a border, which is, uh, you can see its type is border. Its name is border three, and that's just the auto name. You know, it's a third control drug under the canvas, so it's three and it's a border. Uh, this one's called text four for the same reason. And what we're going to do is combine these into one group that we can then make a button out of. So we're going to drag them where we want them to be. Uh, so this is what our button's going to look like. I'm going to select both controls, and under the controls tab, I'm going to choose under grouping, I'm going to hit group, and that changed it from border 3 and text 4 into group 5, which is now just a single control. Uh, and we can name this, uh, it's called group 5 right now, uh, we could name it like uh, start clock 
button just for reference and you don't have to name these but this will make it easier to follow in the video uh, so here's our little button called start clock button and uh, we'll change the text on it to start clock that's what we're going to be doing excuse me doing with it um, and again we have the ellipse here telling us that there's too much text that doesn't fit in the box we need to lower the font size or in this case uh, I think we'll just come over and come to this text wrapping icon and that drops it into two lines uh, to where both start and clock fit on the line nicely so we don't have to resize it uh, and we can make our button a little wider maybe uh, I actually would like to make the font a little smaller probably Oops, uh, two lines is good though uh, and we could also you know change the background color of this to I don't know, something, some kind of green maybe uh, for start clock. Uh, make the border thickness a little more. Uh, so there's our start clock button. We'll come under template and fit the window to zoom back out. Uh, so it looks okay, but we still need to have it actually start the clock. And we do that by assigning a macro to it. Uh, so to assign a macro to it, we can right click on it and choose macro editor. And the way macros work in Quick Touch Pro, uh, everything has a source. So the source in this case is our button we touched. Uh, and we named it Start Clock Button, uh, but it could have been called Group 5 here. Uh, event is Click. That's uh, the only thing you can really do with this button is click it or touch it if you have a touch enabled device. Uh, so what do we do want to happen when we click the Start Clock button? We want to start our poker clock. So our target is Poker Clock. And our action is start clock. And you can see that we could start it, stop it, pause it, uh, all the normal stuff, reconnect clients if this was the network, if you had them networked together. Uh, but again, we want to start the clock for this particular button. And we have to supply a parameter here, and that is the poker clock we actually want to start. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to browse out again to that uh, data source file we created and choose open. And we're going to choose add. And you can see now when we click our start button, or our start clock button, we are just going to start the poker clock. Uh, and let's just actually see what that looks like. We'll preview the template. Uh, so we've got 15 minutes remaining in the level, we start the clock, uh, you hear a little click sound and you can see now the clock starts ticking down and we've got our 14 minutes left or whatever. Uh, so let's go back into the editor. Let's make a couple more buttons. Uh, we can start the clock. Uh, let's also make one for stopping it and pausing it. And we can do that quickly by going up to controls, oh, I'm sorry, home. And over here to clipboard and we're going to choose copy. We're going to create a copy, so we'll do paste for pause. Uh, let's do stop, previous and next maybe. Uh, let's come down to them. Highlight start clock and change that to pause clock. Uh, this one's going to be stop. This will be previous level. And again, you could use images for these videos. You can use all kinds of stuff for buttons. Uh, but for this video, we're just doing this. Uh, and this one's going to say next level. Uh, so let's select all these. I do would love, I'd like them all to be on two lines, so I'm going to make the font a little bigger. Uh, until we get next level onto two lines. Uh, I'd also like a little space between those. An easy way to do it while I have them all selected, I can just uh, resize them all at one time to make it a little smaller there. Uh, if I want to center these in this canvas, I can group them. Let's say right click and group. And I can select a control that's already centered, like our title up here is centered. And holding down the control key, come back to down to our group of buttons. Come under layout, and where's it at? Uh, choose centers, and it will align my controls all to the center here. So we can, let's right click and ungroup our buttons so we can work on them individually again. Uh, and I could also, if I hold down the control key, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard. Uh, we can move that down a little to the bottom for some precise movement. Uh, so anyway, a pause clock, we change the text on it, uh, but if we go into its macro editor, you'll see that it's still set to start clock because we copied our start clock button. So we want to change that to pause clock, and we can do that easily by, while well, we have start clock selected, come up and hit this edit selected action, uh, which fills in all our original options here, so target poker, poker clock. And action this time is going to be pause clock. Uh, we already browsed out to our um, tournament data source, so we can just hit update. And you see now when we click it, we're going to do pause clock. Uh, same thing with stop clock. We'll right click, editor. Uh, we'll highlight start, edit, and change it from start to stop. And choose watch uh, where it says click start clock. As soon as we hit update, it says stop clock now. So now that button's going to start, pause, stop it. Uh, when we get to previous level, and here's a shortcut for the macro editor, you can double click a control to open it up, it's macro editor. And another way we could, uh, this is again another way to do the same thing, instead of editing this, uh, we could delete it and we could just re-add that macro. So poker clock, previous level this time, and then we have to browse out to our poker clock, choose add. So now that's going to go to the previous level, double click this guy, uh, just delete his macro, and just do poker clock. What do we have here? Next level. And browse back out to our poker clock, and choose add. Uh, save that. So let's go ahead and preview our template again. See if all this is working. Hit start clock, which should be working. We already tested that. And now we should be able to pause our clock, which we can. Uh, if we stop our clock, we should go, actually, let's start it again first. 
Uh, with our clock running, if we hit stop, it should stop and go back to 15 minutes, the start of this level. Uh, we can go to the next level, which uh, it did, but you can't see because all we're showing is that it's 15 minutes. But if we were to skip ahead to the break, you'll see that uh, here's our five minute break. Uh, previous would be the level behind it, etc. Uh, so let's go back into the editor. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is display a little information about our level, right? Let's uh, show maybe what level we're currently on, what the small blind is, what the big blind is. Uh, before we do that, let's, uh, let's change these buttons a little bit. So let's go to our pause clock button and make it, uh, make it yellow. You know, pause is a warning color. Uh, for stop clock, let's make that red. You don't want to stop the clock, probably, uh, because you lose your current place in the level, obviously. We can make the font white there as well. Uh, previous level, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time reading picking colors for these guys, but we'll make these both the same color. We'll just pick that gray again for the next button. Uh, all right, so now we're going to display, let's display the small blind and the big blind next over here in the corner. And to do that, I'm going to do a plain, plain text control, and we'll drop it on there. Uh, I'm going to zoom in with the slider here. Uh, just drag that up, get a better look at my stuff here. Let's zoom out a little. And then using the, again, holding down the space bar, I can pan around my canvas a little bit. And this text is going to say, we're going to do a label that says small blind, and next to that, we'll actually display the small blind. Uh, and I'm going to line this up on a grid so we can get it all lined up. Uh, so there's small blind. And we're also going to want one of those for the big blind. So I'm going to do Control-C, Control-V for copy-paste. And we're going to change this label to say big blind. Uh, we'll zoom over a little. And now next to these, we want, again, the small blind and the big blind. So I'm just going to whoops, undo that. I did undid that with Control-Z. I grabbed too high there. Uh, I want to select only these two labels, and again, we can choose copy paste up here if you don't use want to use a keyboard. And we have a copy of our small and big blind labels. Uh, now we're just going to change these like we did. Uh, this label up here shows the current level time, so here we're just going to bind this, the small blind here. So under data again, data binding, we still have our data source selected, but instead of level time remaining, this is going to be small blind, and we'll hit apply. Uh, we'll come down to big blind, do the same thing. We'll just bind it to the big blind. Uh, and you can see as we do that on the properties window, if we come back up to this guy, you can see that he's bound to the small blind. Uh, and let's zoom out a little bit here now. Move over. Uh, and again, now we can change this text to whatever we want. So uh, for the purposes of resizing this, let's say the blinds are 15 and 30. And again, it's important to uh, size these properly when you're creating it. You know, if your blinds are a million and two million, you need to make sure that a million fits in this box, not just 15, obviously. Uh, but let's make our, I'm going to select the small blind and the big blind and make them bold. Uh, we could even make them a different color. Uh, maybe a deeper, darker shade of that blue. Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and let's make them a little bigger now as well. Uh, so I'm just going to increase the font size on all of these. And you can see as I make the font bigger, uh, small blind and big blind are no longer fitting in their boxes. Uh, but that's no problem. We're just going to highlight, whoops, going to make sure just highlight 15 and 30. And if I hold down the control key again to use my arrow keys, I can just move those guys quickly out of the way without moving them up or down or anything. And I'll select small blind and big blind and just grab their resize handle and just resize them out to where text fits a little better. Uh, and then we'll move 15 and 30 back over and we could even bring these in a little bit. Uh, so now if we go back under template and fit the window, we zoom out. Uh, so there's our small blind and our big blind, uh, which in our 15 and 30 here, those are actually bound to the small blind and big blind. I'm going to select both of the, or all four of those, hold down control, and with my arrow keys, I'm going to move that again, get it over there a little bit. Uh, so the thing, next thing we're going to do is put the word, uh, we'll put the level over here. So we have the option of either the level, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the level description, level 1, level 2, level 3, break. Uh, so in this case, we're going to do level description. So we'll drag a text control onto the canvas. Uh, we'll just pop that down here somewhere where we think it'd look good. Uh, resize it out to about where we think it's going to be. Let's make it a little bigger. Um, and again, we're same thing, uh, same way we bound everything else here. We're going to go up under data, and we're going to go to data binding. We're going to choose uh, current level description, which is again going to be the word level and then the current level. And we'll hit apply. And now you can see by the square bracket and the start of the word current, you know, whatever, what he chose here, current level description. Uh, you can see that we're bound up there. Uh, and again, we want to go over here in home and just change that text to something a little easier to resize, something meaningful. So let's say level 99. Uh, we're not going to have more than 99 levels. And we can see now level 99 is not level 99 will not fit. Uh, we either need to change the font size, or again, we can come down uh, like we did on the buttons and turn on text wrap, uh, which we'll do here. Uh, maybe even make that bold. Uh, so I think that's about it. We've got our small blind current level. Let's just preview our template. Uh, actually, let's save it one more time first. And now let's preview our template. And we start off, uh, we've got level 1, 15 minutes, the blinds are 5 and 10. If we start our clock, uh, our clock starts ticking down. 
uh, we can go to our next level and the clock continues to run because our clock was running when we went to the next level and we have our small blend is now 10 and 20 we're on level 2 next is 1530 level 3 notice the clock restarts every time we go to the next level uh, when we get to the break, we display break and small blind, big blind. Um, then, of course, we go into 20, 40. And once we get to level 6, our blinds start to, start to double, so 40, 80, uh, 80, 160, etc. And we could pause this, uh, stop it, and, of course, any of the other buttons you saw in there. Uh, so that's going to conclude this video. And again, this is just a really basic poker clock to kind of give you an idea of what, what would be involved in creating a poker clock. And we hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks.